Wilhelm Keitel. One of the most famous marshals of the Third Reich, and at the same time the most reviled. He was nicknamed as Lekittel by his companions, which means lackey in German, or as Der General Jawohl, which means, the general, yes sir. Keitel held the position of chief of the high command of the Wehrmacht throughout World War II, and his companions taunts refer to the fact that he never had the courage to confront Hitler, and oppose his orders. After being one of the main signatories in the official surrender of Germany, Keitel was sentenced to death at the Nuremberg trials, and was hanged on October 16, 1946. As we will see later, a series of misfortunes occurred during his execution, which they took him to die in the worst possible way. In any case, Keitel was able to write his memoir while he was in prison, finishing it just weeks before he was executed. Thus, and based on this book, in today's program we are going to see six curiosities about Keitel, which I assure you will be very striking, even one of them being the only occasion in which Hitler was seen taking a beer. The first of them, how could it be otherwise, is Keitel's own opinion of his position. On many occasions the marshal complains that he had no life of his own, and that deep down, he would have liked to dedicate himself to directing his farms instead of being a soldier. He was a lover of hunting, and whenever he could get away from his duties as head of the OKW, he would try to go hunting, or go to visit his family. However, he was soon required to return to Berlin or had to go see Hitler, and he had to suspend all leisure plans for him. Without a doubt, one of the things he regrets the most is not having been able to spend more time with his wife, and his children. On the other hand, Keitel was aware of the ridicule and criticism of his colleagues, who accused him of being too soft on Hitler. But in this matter, Keitel makes a very interesting reflection, this being the following. Why did all those generals who criticized me so much never come to ask that I be dismissed? Why didn't anyone ever show up to take my place? Why were all my resignation requests rejected? For all of them it was easier to criticize and curse me, while they put all the responsibility on my shoulders. But no one ever tried to help me or put themselves in my situation. The reality was that no one was willing to replace me, because everyone knew that they would end up as broken as I ended up. As a final shot to this first point, we must also indicate that Keitel felt very bad when he was promoted to Field Marshal, after the fall of France. According to him, that position should only be for those generals who lead troops on the battlefield, and not for men like him, for which he was embarrassed when he was given the position and everyone applauded him. The second curiosity, also linked to the first, is the candidate for whom Keitel continually asked to be replaced. Specifically, von Manstein was the general for whom Keitel asked to be replaced on three occasions. The first occasion took place in October 1939, when after defeating Poland, they had to start preparing for the campaign against France. The second was in December 1941, when after the failure against Moscow, Brauchitsk was dismissed as head of OKH. And finally, the third time that Keitel asked to be removed by Manstein, it was in September 1942. All these requests were rejected by Hitler, despite the fact that at that time, his relationship with Manstein was quite good. Would Manstein have had more character against Hitler than Keitel had? It is very possible that yes, but he would not have lasted long in the position, and for practical purposes, everything would have been the same. Let's go now with the curiosity that is perhaps the most striking, this being the occasion in which Keitel affirms that he saw Hitler drink half a beer. It all happened after the annexation of Czechoslovakia in March 1939. Hitler, and a retinue in which Keitel was, arrived on the night of April 16 on the outskirts of Prague. As the trip was a bit impromptu, they didn't have any dinner ready, but they managed to get a cold dinner. Dinner consisted of cold Prague ham, rolls, butter, cheese, and fruit. And it was here when, to everyone's surprise, Keitel says that he saw Hitler drink half a glass of Pilsner beer with them, as a celebration for the success of the operation. Keitel said that dinner along with the beer, he tasted wonderful to them. During the next six years in which both men practically did not separate, he did not see Hitler again, drinking something that had alcohol. The fourth curiosity takes us to the first opinion that Keitel had about Hitler, when he found out that in 1933, he had been elected chancellor. It should be noted that at that time, they had not yet met in person, nor had they dealt directly. His first words when someone asked him for his opinion were the following. 
He looks like a drummer to me. He is someone who has found success among simple people solely through the power of his oratory. It seems to me very unlikely that he is ready to be Chancellor of Germany. Later, when he was able to meet him, his opinion changed a lot and he came to value very positively the persuasive capacity of the German leader, and his political and leadership skills. Let's go now with the fifth curiosity, this being the way in which he died. On October 1, 1946, Keitel was found guilty of war crimes, crimes against peace, and crimes against humanity, and was sentenced to death. Fifteen days later he was executed by hanging, since his last wish to be shot was denied. The first error that was made during his execution, was the calculation that was made in the length of the rope, and Keitel did not die from a broken neck, but rather had a long death from suffocation. But if this mistake wasn't enough, the trapdoor he had to fall through was too small and this caused Keitel to hit his head when he went through it. This caused a gap in his head from which abundant blood came out, while the marshal was suffocating. To summarize, he had the worst possible death that someone can have when it comes to being hanged. The book with his memoirs would be published a year after his death, after being arranged and corrected by the publishers, because due to lack of time, Keitel left a manuscript with numerous errors. And finally let's go with Keitel's last curiosity, which is none other than the final reflection that he leaves in his memoirs. During the last phase of the war, Keitel often thought of suicide as a way out of the whole situation. However, this was an idea that he always rejected, because he considered that it did not solve anything. The only thing he would have achieved, in his opinion, is that the labels of deserter, coward and traitor would have been associated with his name. Based on this thought that he himself had, he could not understand Hitler's suicide at all. Keitel did not see with good eyes that Hitler committed suicide, because the German leader was free of responsibilities, while he was the one who had to carry them all. The exact words that he left in his memoirs regarding this matter were as follows. Letting a subordinate have to be held accountable for many of his decisions that were made autocratically and arbitrarily is something that will be forever incomprehensible to me. It was my final disappointment. Well, here's this program. What do you think? Do you think that von Manstein, as Keitel himself wanted, would have done a better job? Do you agree with his opinion about the end of Hitler? In the future we will do another program on Keitel, focusing on that time on issues related to military operations. He left you in the description the link to the program about the fall of the Third Reich, which will surely interest you. We say goodbye here. Many thanks to everyone, especially the sponsors who make this possible. Subscribe and share this program if you liked it, and see you in the next one. See you soon.